population has been systematically undermined and made invisible. Over the years, as I have worked with university students and visitors to our Afro-Caribbean museum, I have become increasingly aware of the lack of knowledge regarding the black presence on the Isthmus of Panama. And this was my motivation for publishing last year this book, Afrodescendientes en el Istmo de Panama, 1501 a 2012. And I wanted to put in that date, 1501, because that is the official beginning date of, of, of our history here in Panama. And I wanted to emphasize that we have been here from the very beginning. And I cited historical works that confirmed the presence of black Africans on the Isthmus of Panama from as early as 1513. I'm sure we were there here before that, but at least this is some documentation that we do have. And the successive influx of black Africans in the next three centuries <laughs> as the African slave trade acquired global dimensions. Slavery was officially abolished in Panama in 1851, and then came next waves of Afro-Caribbeans, immigrants, to work on three main projects. We had first the Transistian uh, Railway between 1850 and 1855. Then we had uh, the French Canal effort between 1880 and 1889 and then the construction of the, the, the canal by the Americans between 1904 and 1914. And for all those projects, uh, Afro-Caribbeans, West Indians, migrated to Panama. Now in this presentation, I will cite some of the Afro-Panamanian authors and particular portions of their works that reflect some aspect of the black experience on the Isthmus of Panama. I have made an attempt to cite works that draw from four literary genres, and I'm not getting into literary analysis, it's just a matter of saying here, this is what is available. You know, I've chosen for poetry, drama, the short story, and novel. And most of my citations are from works written in Spanish, so, you know, make, this will sometimes be a bilingual English-Spanish presentation. As the European nations, Portugal, England, Spain, and all of them intensified the African slave trade, Panama became an important destination for receiving this human cargo and for distributing it to other parts of the Americas. The Caribbean shores of the Isthmus of Panama witnessed a significant portion of that trade and served as we now, what we would now call a hub for shipment and transshipment of this human cargo. After Panama became an independent republic in 1903, the historical memory of the role of the Isthmus in this human tragedy was systematically undermined or erased. That is, we don't read about Panama's involvement in the slave trade, but there, you know, this was a central portion where slaves were unloaded and shipped to find to sent to different parts of the Americas. If we examine the history textbooks used in this country, we'll see little or no references to the fact that the slave trade had a significant impact on the Isthmus of Panama. So much so, there is a significant portion of the population that believe that black people came to, into Panama. The only black people that came to Panama were those that came from the Caribbean for the, the, the railroad and for the canal. Um, the, the memory of those who came with the slave trade has not been kept alive. Um, it's, it's, it's only been in recent decades or so that there is a beginning to be a general acceptance of the slave trade and its effect on the population of Panama. At Manga Fortune, 
a West Indian Panamanian, did pioneer studies of the black presence in Panama. Later, there were other historians, such as Patricia Pusurno and Celestino Arauz, who continued this research. For example, in one of the publications, Pisurno and Arauz uh, said that in 1607, a report that they copied or that they documented from the Real Audiencia de España, they indicated that the black population of Panama constituted 70.31% of the total inhabitants and the whites represented only 22.22%. That is, was in 1607. And the other 5.8% were for mixed races. During the decade of 1620 to 1630, according to another Panamanian historian, Alfredo Castillo Calvo, there were approximately 10,000 to 14,000 enslaved the first leagues on the Isthmus of Panama. Now, in the early section of my book, I deal with the phenomenon of the, Cam the Cimarrones, or Maroons, the runaway slaves who escaped and formed their own communities that were known as Palenques on the Caribbean coast of Panama. They have preserved their African traditions primarily through dances and through language. Now, one of the Panamanian writers who writes short stories and essays that chronicle the history and culture of the, the descendants of these Cimarrones, or Maroons, currently known as the Congas in Panama, is Nolis Boris Gondola Solis. And he has, he, he is. As, as the, the Congo Queen said, él es uno de los pocos Congos que escribe. <laughs> yeah, and he writes and he chronicles the, 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 the life experiences of the, the, the people who live along the coast of Colón. And that's what, and you know, it, it's impressive because he projects this type, he uses this type of attire at all times. He, he teaches, he's a teacher, but um, he's comfortable. He's now comfortable with himself and with projecting himself as a Congo. And he's written, the, the, he, he's written several books uh, expressing some of the life experiences. This one is called La Isla de los Manglares. Uh, what I like also is this son is about, you know, six years old now, but um, he and Nick, they're storytellers, and they both work together and they tell stories about life in Cumberland. And um, so, you know, he wrote this book in which he has several short stories. Uh, one is entitled, uh, How Blacks Came to the Isthmus. And uh, I'll read it, an uh, excerpt in Spanish. It says, in 1509, fundan nombre de Dios y luego de muchos trabajos casi un siglo después, se mudan a una hermosa bahía que los proveería de mayor seguridad, a la cual llamaron Portobelo, donde construyeron varios castillos, San Jerónimo, Santiago de la Gloria, fortificaciones como San Fernando y San Fernandito, San Cristóbal, La Negrería, y alto del Perú, los cuales no les servirían de nada ya que serían víctimas de los piratas y corsarios y posteriormente de los negros cimarrones en el camino de cruces. Por años de esclavitud, luego de la fundación del hombre de Dios, los negros rebeldes huirían a las montañas y les declararían la guerra a los colonizadores, uniéndose a piratas y corsarios, atajando el tránsito de mercaderías desde Portobelo hacia Panamá la Vieja, y luego a la nueva ciudad de Panamá, siendo llamados negros cimarrones de manera despectiva. So the Cimarron group 
really presented problems for the Spanish. And you may have heard about Bayano. He is proclaimed the one of the kings, uh, or the king, and Spain had to negotiate with him in order to, uh, uh, so that the Cimarrones wouldn't be attacking the convoys of, of, of Spanish merchandise. Uh, in, in the end, they, they played a trick on him and poisoned his followers and he died, I think, in Spain. Okay, then we have another young lady, and I'm very pleased to, to know that there's a young lady coming up and she is doing research on this, this portion of her history. She's published a book called Camino a Mariano, and in that book, it's, um, it, there's a story called El Viaje, which tells of uh, the preparations that were being made in a convent, and this is, this is uh, old Panama, where there were many convents, and they were awaiting the, the, the visit from Morgan the following day. St. Paul Patterson was a scourge that left its strong imprints on the Isthmus during the 17th century. Some of you will visit the ruins of old Panama while you're here, and that was attacked and destroyed on the 28th of January, 1671, by the famous English poet, a pirate, Henry Morgan. Now, Melanie Taylor, in her book, Camino a Mariato, writes a short story entitled El Viaje, which describes the setting and interaction of female slaves who lived in one of the Catholic convents of Panama Bien. On the rare occasion when they got together, the older women would share their experiences of crossing the Atlantic on slave ships. El olor nauseabundo de las...